All right, let's get to the word of God. Psalm, I'm sorry. Yeah, Psalm 27. Psalm 27. And I'm going to start a word today to kind of build the foundation. Yeah, y'all ready for that word? Juanita Parker, good morning to you. Maple Christian, good morning to you. Ready for this word. Let's go to Psalm 27. Psalm 27. Yes, yes, yes. Latoya Wells. We're ready. Katrina's ready. Brian Wells ready. Yes, we're ready. I hope y'all got your Bibles. Are you, are you paper Bible saved this morning? <laughs> paper Bible saved. Get this word, y'all. I want you to get your word. I challenge y'all. I know this, this is not anything, you know, scripture that you have to have a paper Bible, but I challenge you to get your word. I know many of y'all on Sundays, you're watching me from your technological device, but it's different when you can actually see that word and and highlight that word and scriptures and things to that degree. So get your words. Oh, we have it here. Yes, and we're going to go. We're going to read verses um, 4 through 8. It says, The one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most, is to live in the house of the Lord. To live, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple. For he will conceal me there. When troubles come, he will hide me in his sanctuary. He will place me out of reach on a high rock. Then I will hold my head high above my enemies. Wow, the presence of God changes the posture of man. Do y'all see that? I'm just seeing that now. Then I will hold my head. Thank you, Lord. That's good. I will hold my head high above my enemies. I will change my posture before opposition because I've been in the presence of God. My enemies who surround me at his sanctuary, I will offer sacrifices with shouts of joy. Verse 7 says, oh, I'm sorry, singing and praising the Lord with music. Verse 7 says, hear me as I pray, O Lord. Be merciful and answer me. And here it is, verse 8, our, our key verse. My heart has heard you say, my heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. Watch this. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. This morning, I want to preach to this, uh, to begin this series, Seekers. I want to preach from this thought. It starts in the heart. It starts in the heart. Come on, type that in the chat and we'll work this. And we'll start this now and then we'll finish it up on Thursday. It starts in the heart. Um... I shared with you all on New Year's Eve that 2021 would be a year for the seekers. I hope y'all remember that. It will be a year for the seekers. And uh, you'll find that during this, during this message, I have you all talk back to me often uh, so that I know we're cooperating and kind of working together, right? So type seekers in the chat for me real quick. I want, I want your mindset. I want your whole perspective uh, to begin to be set on really seeking the Lord. 2021 will be a year for the seekers. And this is those who diligently pursue the face of God diligently, perpetually, consistently, fervently uh, pursue the face of God. The Lord told me that seekers, those who seek him, would walk in unprecedented favor, okay? And that word unprecedented means it's unmatched. It's never known before. The seekers this year will walk in what they've never known before. The Bible says, I have not seen, ear have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men the thing the Lord has stored up for those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. Um, the Lord says this year, there are things that you have never known before. Things that, and I know that sounds really like simple, but like, of course, it's 2021 past that there are new things. But I'm talking about things in your Christian walk that you've never seen manifest before, miracles and, and manifestation of God's presence, tangible presence you've never seen before is going to manifest in ways in which, you, which, which you've never known. This year, those who stay in the face of God will live in the favor of God, okay? Those who stay in his face 
will live in his favor like you've never known it before. His favor being indicative of benefits and, and blessings resulting from fellowship with him. Now, it's not this merit um, that you're trying to do enough to get enough from him, but you're going to see that there's such favor that follows those uh, who remain in fellowship because as you stay before his face, uh, he's going to be manifesting things around you because of your willingness to stay in connection and fellowship with him. This year, in your pursuit of God, you're going to see provision you've never known before. That's why the Lord told me to tell you you're going to give big this year because you're going to have provision that you've... I'm telling y'all, I'm talking about things that blow your mind. It's going to happen as a result of your seek and your pursuit of God. You're going to see opportunities you've never known before. You will not have to work for opportunities. Now, don't, don't walk around, glory to God, don't walk around being lazy and don't walk around being stagnant, but, but as you just obey God and live in obedience with him, you're going to see opportunities you've never known before. Hear me this morning, in your pursuit of God, you're going to walk through doors you've never known before. And I love this because God is writing almost, it's like 2021 is a new canvas. It's a, it's a, new, a new thing that's happening in the life of the believers, and it's going to literally blow your mind as you are surrounded rendered and as you and as you are seeking God you're going to see things you've never seen before those whose affections are towards God will see him continually add to their life I know it seems like we lost a lot last year in different aspects and capacities of our life but God says I am adding continually to the life of the seeker in ways they've never known before and watch this they will lack no good thing Hear me this morning. I'm speaking to you prophetically. The Lord says this year, the seeker will not lack. And I'm about to show you scripturally that I'm not just giving you cliches and just trying to make you uh, uh, feel excited just off of whatever. I'm going to show you scripturally that the seeker this year, hallelujah, will not lack. Uh, somebody just type in the chat, no lack, no lack. Come on, no lack, no lack, no lack. Talk back to me in the chat. The seeker will not experience lack. And I'm going to show you why. According to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, when we seek, aim at, strive after his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, the attitude and character of God, when we go after God, when we seek his face, when we desire to be more like him and with him, it says he will give us everything we need. He will add unto us. He will give us in abundance what we need as a result of our seek. His, his additional uh, scripture to support that, that claim. Psalm 34, 10, it says those, the latter part of it says, those who seek the Lord will not lack any good thing. Those who seek the Lord. See, what happened last year is as things begin to crumble and as things begin to become scarce, uh, we started seeking resources. Uh, and we started seeking help uh, and things that will help sustain us. Uh, the Lord says, no, people got it backwards. Uh, he said, if you seek me, uh, I'll sustain you. Uh, but not only will I sustain you, uh, I will abundantly supply the sustainment. Hear me. So not only do I just have enough, I have more than enough. Can you just declare in your house? I can't hear y'all. Can you declare that 2021 is a year that I have more than enough? And I can say that on the account of Psalm 34 verse 10. Those who seek the Lord will not lack any good thing. I don't know what you consider good, but the Lord says I, you will not lack any good thing. Watch this as a result of seeking him. So you mean to tell me, Pastor Jeff, if I seek his heart, he'll supply me in my hand. He'll give me what I need according to Psalm 34 verse 10 because I'm trying to be scripturally contextual. Those who seek the Lord will not lack any good thing. Can you just prophesy to yourself? I will not lack. I wish I had a church. Can somebody in the virtual church talk to me too? Come on, I need to hear. I will not lack. Come on, Marquise. I will not lack. I will not lack. I don't know uh, whether they give me a stimulus or not. Uh, I am abundantly supplied uh, by God. He supplied all my need according to uh, his riches and glory. If I stay on my face, I'll stay in his favor. If I seek him. Come on, talk to me this morning, Sister Lala. If I seek him, he'll supply for me. The supply of God, watch this, remains open in the life of the seeker. 
The supply of God remains open in the life of the seeker, which means if I keep seeking, he keeps supplying. Am I in the Bible? Check it. Am I in the Bible? If I keep seeking, he keeps supplying. But watch this. I'm not seeking him for the supply. I'm seeking him because I want him. And as a result of me wanting him, he gives me what I need. Those who want him don't want for anything. Are y'all hearing me this morning in the chat? Those who want him don't want for anything. Because he says, those who seek me will lack no good thing. So you mean to tell me if I keep my hands up, if I keep my heart open, uh, if I keep asking him to come, Lord Jesus, uh, he'll make sure all of my needs are supplied. That's why I'm not worried what the government's going to do. Because I'm a part of a different government. Come on. My government says uh, you don't have to work hard uh, and, and, and lose your mind trying to, trying to, trying to stay uh, uh, above water. No, my government says seek the king and the king will supply. Yeah. If I keep seeking him, if I keep asking for more of him, he'll make sure. Who am I talking to this morning? If I keep going after him, favor will come after me. And if this be true, the question we must ask ourselves at the top of the year, Chucky, is do I want him? That, I, that, that, that's the question, Marquis. That, that's the question, Nadine. Do I want him? Ebony, that's the question. Do I want him? That's it. And I think in 2020, we found out what people really wanted. Because coming, not being able to come together, it really starts to show us what we really prioritize. Because we can't prioritize the building, because we can't prioritize church, now where is God on my list of things? Because initially, God was at least getting two days out of the week from us, right? He was getting Thursdays, uh, and he was getting Sundays. Now, I don't know. Some people log on on Thursdays. Some people log on on Sundays, and that's not the premise of my point. The premise of my point is that we can't hide behind what we really want now. Because you can sit in a pew and it look like you want God. But only you really know the disposition, the disposition, glory to God, of your heart when you're at home. On. Only you really know if you want God when you're at home. When you don't have no keys and you don't have no choir. You don't have a worship team. You don't have nobody hugging you. What do you really want then? Can you still say like David that the one thing you desired of the Lord is to dwell in his house? His house not being a building. His house being his presence. See, we thought the presence was the building, but the building is not the presence. The presence is him. Right. Which means I don't have to be in the building to be with him. But I do have to want him to get him. Are y'all with me this morning? I have to want him to get him. Because he says, those who seek me will find me. The question becomes, do you want God? Is the desire of your heart to dwell with God every day in 2021? Because he, he, here's how I get you. We shout, no, no lack. Yes, no lack to the seeker. But do you really want him? See, I was good when God was telling me, yeah, no lack to the seeker. But wait, do I really want to seek him? That's the question. See, I can shout. We hear stuff that, you know, he that dwelleth in the secret place. But do we actually dwell there? Right. Huh? See, it sounds good at about 1045 a.m. in the morning. But that thing hit different at 3 a.m. Y'all not talking to me in the chat. When the Lord wakes you up at 3 a.m., it sounds good uh, until you can't go to sleep because he's wrestling with you. See, that seek hit different round 2, 30, 3, 4 o'clock when ain't nobody up and you is silent, the street sound. It hits different. You find out what you really want then. That seek hit different when it seems like ain't nothing working for you. When it seems like he's not supplying. Come on, y'all know last year, 2020 challenged your seek. Can I get an amen, a boom, shock, a lock, or something, something? 2020 challenge your seeker. Sometimes you woke up like, you know what? I don't know if I'm seeking God or what today. You know what? I'm just going to do me. I'm going to act the way I want to act. Don't seem like nothing working. Now, challenging times will test the seek of the believer. That's right. 
And I believe the reason why God wants me to start this year off uh, talking about seeking him, uh, because he said, look, if you prioritize me first, uh, if you put me first this year, uh, I promise you, regardless of what comes to the world, uh, to your community and to your family, I will make sure you have everything you need. But you must show me first that it's me that you want. Who am I preaching to this morning? Is there anybody that wants Jesus? Is there anybody that says, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If you will draw your hands from me, I don't have nowhere to go. Do you want him? Does your heart, watch this, does your heart desire God? And I'm specifically referencing the heart because it is the posture of the heart that determines who and what we pursue. The posture of the heart determines who and what we pursue. We saw that in, 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 in verse 27. Can you bring it up real quick? I'm sorry, verse 8, real quick, if y'all can. Uh, 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 um, Psalm 27, verse 8. The, the, the heart, it says, my heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds. Wait a minute. Not my feet, not my shout. My heart responds, Lord, I am coming. And the heart, as it relates to this text, it denotes our inner self, our inclination, our internal disposition, our will, and our intent. That's what the heart reflects. It, it, does, does my will really want God? That's, that's my heart. That's my will really want God. It is my inner person after God. Here's what I've learned. When your heart is after God, you will see it manifest through your physicality. You will never have to tell a person whose heart is after God to lift their hands. Never. Don't nobody, don't nobody gonna tell me, Candace, to kiss my wife. <laughs> You have to tell me to stay off for sometimes, but you, you don't got to encourage me. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Nobody has to tell me to kiss Pastor Wendy because my heart is after her. My heart is for her. You never have to tell a person, listen, to open up their mouths and lift that. You don't. Worship leaders, let me tell you something. It's not your fault. Let me free you. It wasn't that y'all had the wrong song. I'm talking about worship leaders all around the world. It wasn't that you had the wrong song, the wrong set list. It's that you can't get their heart to change in a moment. <laughs> you can't get that to happen in a moment. No, it's a lifelong process. If there's any time you've been before people and you struggle with getting them to worship or lift their hands, it won't your fault. Thank you. I can't put in you what's not in you. Or more so, I can't get out of you what's not in you. It has to be a condition of the heart because it's in the heart where we gain true revelation of who we are and understanding of why we do what we do. The reason why you do what you do is because it's a heart condition. Everything about you is based on your inner world. See, we're trying to change. Look, you can get a new weave, you get fresh Beijing, get a new outfit, all that type of stuff. Y'all need to stop dating people based on how they look outwardly. That's why y'all messing up. That's why God says, I don't look at the outward appearance. I look right at the inner appearance because you smell like Gucci uh, outwardly, but you smell like sin and hell inwardly. Praise the Lord. Gator boots and a pimped out Gucci suit. <laughs> You look good outwardly, but you a mess. You got to stop dealing with people and God from an outward perspective. It's the inner world that counts. We'll deal more with that dating stuff in February. Because some of y'all, y'all dating people and going out to people because they look good and smell good, got a good job. And then when you start dating them, they're hitting you upside your head, talking verbally abusive. You're like, wait a minute, where this come from, my heart? Because out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaks. The life releases. Everything is. Hey, I'm just, I just helped somebody. Somebody about to dump their boyfriend and girlfriend right at the top of the year. I heard that. You about to let them go. That's why they keep talking to me like that. Yes, it's in their heart, girl. He bought you a purse. Uh, my guy, she bought you a watch. Uh, but you better watch that heart before you end up getting entangled. Come on. Jada Pinkett showed us last year. The entanglements ain't good. Hello. It's a heart issue. A heart 
entanglement. I, let me calm down, y'all. I'm sorry. I ain't preaching like uh, four weeks. So I, 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 let, me, let, me, let me get out of here. It's, it's the heart, y'all. <laughs> it's the heart. As believers, we should be constantly, Brian, asking God to change our heart. Because I would never go after God more than I desire him in my heart. David's heart, not his hands, not his mouth, not his feet. That's why people can shout and praise God and still live in sin. Why, how is that? Because their heart has not been changed. You can perfect. We were joking, Candace. We were joking the other day trying to get Candace to learn how to shout. You know, don't, don't, don't. She was struggling. Praise God. It's all right. <laughs> she was struggling. I was like, all right, one, two, three, four, and five. You know, we perfect our shouts and we perfect our, our gifts and we perfect our, our talents. But it's that heart, man. And the enemy knows that. That's why he'll allow you to excel. And then the great, watch this. I found this out. The greater you excel, the greater your heart gets exposed. Could it be that God has not advanced some of us by his grace and mercy? Because he knows there are some heart issues that if you don't deal with them now, at the next level, they'll, they'll destroy you. God, I'm glad you didn't give me that promotion because the boss at that level I will cuss out and not get a job ever again because of something in my heart. Y'all are not talking to me in this metropolitan church. You, 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 you've got to deal with your heart. You've got to. Chucky, I'm learning this. It's a heart condition. The reason why you feel that way, I don't talk about God, but let me go here. The reason why you feel that way about that person, it's in your heart. The reason why you keep going back to the situation, it's in your heart. David says, my heart response, it is your heart responding to people, places, things, and God. And God says, at the top of the year, I want you to get your heart right, because if you don't seek me from your heart, you'll never find me. If you don't seek me from the inner place, you'll never find me. David knew it was a heart thing. He wanted God. And actually, he wanted God before God solicited him. Watch this. He wanted God. In verse 8, it says, God says, uh, 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 David says, I heard you say, come talk to me. And my heart responded, yes, I'm coming. But the reason why it was easy for him to do that, Chucky, is because he already wanted God. How do we know that? Verse 8, I mean, I'm sorry, verse 4 says, the one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple. David wanted God before God solicited him. Can y'all hear me this morning? David's heart, his inclination, his internal disposition, we told you that's what the heart is, his will, his intent. It made it easy for him to respond to the request of God. I want you to consider this. How have you been responding to God's request? How have you been responding to God's request? I had to think about this. Have I been hesitant in my obedience? That's a heart issue. Disobedience, it's a heart issue. Oh, God. Every time I say no to God, it's not a declaration. It's a disposition. Glory to God. It's just not me saying, no, God, I'm not going to do that. No, God, I'm not ready. That's what my heart is. That's how my heart is set up right now. Glory to God. And if you don't change, he came out in school told, if you don't change that heart, that you will never really experience the fullness of God. That he's constant. That's why, y'all, you cannot. Uh, it's scary when you stop feeling conviction. It's a scary place uh, when you're no longer convicted. That means my heart is no longer responding to the sentiments of God. Lord, that's why David says, cast me not away from your presence. Take not your spirit from me. Create in me a clean heart. Why? Because that's how I respond to you. That's how I work with you. That's how I serve with you. God, I need you to do something in my heart. Can you just type in the chat, Lord, do it in me. God, whatever you've got to change, hallelujah. Glory to God. Whatever you've got to remove, uh, whatever I've got to sacrifice, uh, whatever I've got to lay at the altar, uh, I want to know you uh, in the goodness uh, and the fullness uh, of who you are. Change my heart. Come on. Declare that wherever you are. God, change my heart. Change my heart. Uh, deal with those issues, uh, those childhood issues, uh, those traumatic issues, uh, whatever it takes. If I, if I got to go to Christian counseling, uh, if I've got to go on a fast, uh, God created me a heart uh, that responds to you. 
Hey, Komansha, a heart that responds. I hear that the Lord says this year, he's creating in you a heart that responds the first time. A heart that responds with the first request. God, you won't have to wait about delay this year. When you ask me, I'm going to say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, is a heart response. We've been singing, yes, Lord. Uh, stop singing it and make it a sentiment of your heart. Hey, Kobanda la bandusia bashe. It's the heart's response. Uh, watch this. When our heart truly desires God, uh, we'll turn down our plate. And we're about to do it for 21 days. Hello, somebody. Uh, when our heart uh, truly uh, desires God, uh, we'll turn down our plates just to draw closer to him. Uh, when our heart uh, truly desires God, uh, we'll be right at home. Uh, I can't see you, uh, although you can see me. Uh, you'll be right in your kitchen, uh, right on worship, uh, virtually with your hands lifted up, glory to God, and you're in full pajama attire. Uh, but you say, I've got to lift him up because uh, that's who I really want. Uh, when your heart truly desires him, um, you'll forgive people. Listen, uh, I ain't even forgiving you uh, for my, uh, for your sake. Uh, I'm forgiving you uh, for my sake uh, so that I can still stay in his presence because uh, the Bible says uh, I can't even come before him uh, if I've got art against you. Uh, matter of fact, uh, you better be glad that I want him more than I'm offended by you. I want him more than uh, I will entertain your offense. Uh, oh, yeah, you offended me uh, and you hurt me, uh, but I forgive you. Why? Because I don't want anything uh, horizontally uh, stopping my flow uh, vertically. Uh, I've got to be able to feel him. Uh, I've got to be able to hear him. Uh, I've got to be able to know he's with me. Uh, I forgive you. <laughs> I forgive you so I can stay in fellowship with him. I get this out of my heart. Oh, glory to God. Just tell somebody in the chat, get it out of your heart. Get it out of your heart. Don't let it be a blockage to your future. Don't let it be a blockage to his presence. Get that thing out of your heart. If I've got to cry, I'm getting it out of me. If I've got to weep, I'm getting it out of me. If I've got to be delivered, I'm throwing it out. Whatever it takes, I'm getting it out of me so I can get into him. It begins in the heart. Everything concerning our relationship with God begins in the heart. And knowing this, we must ask the Lord, Hikubandashia, yes, Lord. We must ask the Lord to search our heart as we seek his face. Here's what I love about God the pursuit doesn't require perfection, but it does require confession. Because if it, if it requires perfection, none of us could pursue him. None of us could seek him. If it required perfection, it just requires confession. Saying, okay, God, here's my heart. Here's what's in me. Search me, God, and when you acknowledge that this is in me, God, I'll take responsibility for that, and I'll say, God, clean that out of me. Watch this. If our pursuit of his presence is governed by the posture of our heart, then keeping our heart pure should be of top priority. Are y'all with me? I'm going to say that again. If our pursuit of his presence is governed by the posture of our heart, then keeping our heart pure should be of top priority. The reason why I keep my heart pure, the reason why we keep our heart pure is so that we can pursue the Father. Oh, you don't watch that on TV? No. Are oh, you deep? No, but I have a desire. <laughs> Your desire will keep you from doing certain things. They put it like this. Your desire for him will keep you from doing certain things. Are oh, you deep? Are oh, you holier than thou? No, I'm not. I just realized that if this gets in my heart, it's going to affect my pursuit. Now, I don't want to sit around and listen to y'all talk about that person. Why? Because if something is established in my heart against them, then it keeps me from getting to him. That's what the Bible says. Guard your heart. Some of y'all this year, when you start hearing mess and conversations, you'll be like, all right, I'm going to head up. Call me deep, call me whatever. What are you doing? I'm guarding the place that fellowships with God. Oh, you don't cuss no more? No. Y'all know that's for, for many of us. That's a, that's a deep heart thing. We got to, ooh, praise God. 
Thank you, G. Look, everybody in this joint laughing like, yes. <laughs> Pastor, let me tell you something. All right. <laughs> Woo, Jesus, we give God praise. I'm trying not to let no obscene language come out of my mouth. Woo, Jesus, we give you praise. Listen, I think everybody cussed in 2020. Let's just let Listen, I repent. I cussed in 2020. All right, I'm sorry. There it is. All right. If you're going to leave the church, please leave your offering. Praise God. I think everybody said something. My God. Oh, my gosh, Pat. Yeah, it was in my heart. It was in my heart. <laughs> it wasn't in my heart to serve the Lord. It was in my, I think everybody at some point, you know, we're going we gonna to repent corporately. Father, forgive us. <laughs> Why? We want our heart to be right. Psalm 24 uh, says in, in verse 4, it says, Who may climb the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? Only those whose hands and hearts are pure, watch this, who do not worship idols. Man, if 2020 showed us something, it showed us what we have established as idols. What is that? What we've given more attention to than God. An idol is anything given excess attention. I wonder how many of us had to deal with some idols. And now we're realizing that at the top of the year, because I dealt with the idol, now I can start searching and pursuing God more with a heart that he responds to and a heart that responds to him. It says, whose hands and hearts are pure, who do not worship idols and never tell lies. They will receive the Lord's blessing. That's favor. I told y'all, this is the year that the seekers walk in unprepped into favor. I'm giving you precepts for the prophecy. I'm giving you uh, support for what God told me to share with you all. They will receive the Lord's blessing and have a right relationship with God, their Savior. Such people may seek you and worship in your presence, O God of Jacob. And again, this is not um, religious rhetoric, like I got like do's and don'ts. We know that by the blood of Jesus, we've, made, we've been made righteous, but it's, it's staying beneath that flow. It's staying surrendered to God. It's staying submitted to his will every single day so that your heart remains in a place that's pliable and available for God to work through you. Are y'all with me? All right. Similar in context, uh, and we're almost done here. Jesus declares in Matthew 5, verse 8, God blesses. He favors. That's, I told y'all, an unprecedented year of favor. He favors those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. So in essence, Chuck, you are seeing God at the level of your purity. You ever wonder why some people are like, man, they have these, these deep encounters with God, and you're like, it's a heart response. They're no better than you. God doesn't look at it like, oh, this person is better than that person, but he does respond to sacrifice. So if this person decides to go on a 21-day fast to be closer to God, he's going to respond at the level of their hunger and their desire and their willingness to purify themselves. If this person decides, well, I'm just going to do bare average, you can get bare average response. If you say, God, I'm going to do whatever it takes to purify my heart, it, it ain't like God got, you know, favorites and things of that degree. He just, he's just responding to the person's willingness to sacrifice. And you can't be mad at a person who's willing to sacrifice something that you're not. If I'm going to sacrifice what it takes to purify my heart, God's going to respond at that level. The Bible says in the Amplified Version, bless, anticipating God's presence. When I read this, Chucky, I realized this. When you're walking in purity, you can anticipate God's presence. And let me tell y'all, let me give y'all an example. Like, there were times where, especially in college, where I was saved, but I was, all right, y'all get it. Praise God. So, so on Sundays, Marquise, I anticipated his forgiveness, but I couldn't anticipate his presence. Or more so, I anticipated his presence to come to, for, to forgive rather than to feel. Because throughout all that week, you know, and some of y'all, you've been in college and stuff like that, you know, you've done so much that it's contaminated your, your inner person, Right? So now, and here it is, y'all, and, and the Bible says, there is therefore no condemnation of those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh. If I walk after the flesh, there's a greater chance it's going to contaminate my inner man. And when there's contamination inwardly, there's constraint in the pursuit. Because if I sat around and sinned all week, even though I'm forgiven, I still have to renew my mind. And renew my thoughts. And a lot of times during that process, those things will try to block the pursuit because of the contamination it did to your inner person. This is why we live pure. We live pure so that nothing blocks the pursuit. 
It ain't about I'm going to do me. Y'all, y'all got to stop living for people. I'm going to do me. I don't care what nobody thinks. I'm going to do this even more so they'll know I'm ratchet. What benefit does it get out of showing other believers that you don't want to really live all the way for God? That's your, that's, that, that's, that's, a, that, that's a, 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 a hindrance to you. I'm going to show them I ain't got to be saved like them. Who cares? You need to be saved like, like God, like Jesus, so you can be closer to him. You got people out here that try to prove people that, that they're not holy. Oh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to prove to anybody that I'm, that I'm holy or not. I'm trying to make sure my heart stays in a place that I can still access God. You. you always praying in tongues. Yes, because it says it edifies me. If I don't edify, I'm going to slap somebody. Yes, if I don't edify, I'm going to fall off. If I don't edify myself, y'all stop letting carnal Christians dismiss uh, your spirituality. Yes, I'm going to fast. Yes, when the church opens back up, I'm coming. Why? Because it says neglect not the gathering of the brethren. I'm going to do whatever the word of God says. And I'm not, let me, let me say this for somebody to make me a sound about. I'm not talking about coming back. I'm talking about post-pandemic when we got vaccines or whatever, all that stuff. Yes, the church, even though it's changed, I'm still coming back to be in the corporate worship. Why? I'm doing whatever it takes. I'm not saying you, God can't touch you online. What I'm saying, I'm doing whatever. If it's in the word, I'm doing it. Because I want to live a life in fellowship with him. The word of God suggests to us when the pursuit of God is pure, the manifestation of his presence is inevitable. You will see him. That's why our hearts have to remain pure because it determines the flow of our seat. You can play softly, Chucky. Our hearts have to remain pure because it determines the momentum and the flow of our seat. This Thursday, I'll, I'll continue this message offering some biblical ways to address and change the condition of our heart. Today, I wanted to just kind of start with us knowing that the, the pursuit, the seek starts in the heart. Like, it's not just me trying to get the whole church to do 21 days of fasting so we can be more religious. No. It's not us this, all right, read your word this year. Listen, you're not going to read your word until your heart wants to read the word. It's not about me saying, all right, you need to pray this year. No. If you, get your, if you allow God to transform your heart, your life will follow. Your habits will follow. And we'll talk about some things you can do to actually address and change the condition of your heart. We'll talk about those things this Thursday. But, but until Thursday, I, I want this to be your prayer for the next few days. Lord, created me a clean heart. Lord, created me a clean heart. Lord, create in me a clean heart. Can y'all type that in the chat real quick before we close out? Create in me a clean heart. 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 Come on. Create in me a clean heart. Come on, let me see you in the chat. Create in me a clean heart. Create in me a clean heart. Create in me a clean heart. The posture of the heart determines the pursuit of God. Create in me a clean heart. Come on. Create in me a clean heart. I want my heart to be pure because the purity of my heart determines the strength of my pursuit. I want God to deal with anything that will block. Anything that will block. Anything that will block. That's right. See, Psalm 51. Create in me a clean heart. Create in me a clean heart. Create in me a clean heart. I want to read something to you, then we're going to pray and close. In 1 John chapter 5, verses 20 through 21, it says, And we know that the Son of God has come, and he has given us understanding so that we can know the true God. Jesus came. He removed the veil so that we can know the true God. And now we live in fellowship. Here it is. This is what the seek is about. And now we live in fellowship with the true God because we live in fellowship with his son Jesus Christ he is the only true God and he is eternal life watch this dear children keep away from anything that might take God's place in your hearts keep away 
Don't go after. Don't pursue anything that might take God's place in your heart. Y'all, this year I've made a decision at the top of this year to give God my whole heart. Can I be honest, y'all? Sometimes we give him a piece of it, a partial, but I challenge you to give God your whole heart. As you do so, I promise you, you're going to see him move in your life, number one, by manifesting himself in ways you've never known, and then by allowing the favor of God to really flow upon your life. Give him your heart. Father, we thank you for this word. We pray, God, that this word will convict us and bring us into a place of submission and surrender that we'll seek you like we've never sought you before. We honor you, we bless you, and thank you. For we know that without you, God, we are nothing. But when we seek you, we find who we are and we walk in what you've created us for. Let us, God, continually seek you, creating us clean hearts. And God, as we continue to search for you, let us find you and grow stronger in our relationship with you. In Jesus' name, amen.